So I want to ask about the shovel. How many of us uh, really used that shovel last night and this morning? How many of us used the shovel? If you say you did it, uh, what was your dream? What did you see? Because I got a, a shocking testimony. It's not shocking to me because I know what the enemies are doing. But it's a shock. Yeah, somebody was lifting hand. Bule Kumalo. Yes, said he did it. Okay. I see Isabel Piri, I see Winnie, I see, okay, okay, Samantha, yeah. Oh, I see quite a lot of us did it. So what did you see? But I, I, I want the sister, you're gonna be hearing from her on Sunday and you watch what happened. You watch what happened immediately after the shoveling, then she went to bed. She went to bed immediately dream. From the dream, she wake up. As soon as she wake up, a phone call come. The ceiling has fallen up, fallen in her in her plate. She saw it in a dream. Immediately, she seen it. The ceiling fell down. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The ceiling fell. The whole ceiling in the room. <laughs> so the demon, the demon could not stay there any longer. They have been living there for ages, oppressing the people. Enjoying what they have never labored for. But our good God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, the God of Issachar, did the deliverance. Hallelujah. So the sister was set free. The sister and the family were set free. It was a big testimony which I cannot. When we ask you to pray here, we bring a prayer point, please do it. This is the video the sister sent to me. This is the video. But anyway, you see the ceiling scattered? Let me leave the video because it's a long video. Okay, let me go to the pictures. You can see the ceiling in the house. Can you see? You see the ceiling? Can you see the ceiling? See the other one? You see? You see another one? Immediately she finished the prayer. She closed her eyes. She went into trance. Sometime, the ceiling scattered. So when we are doing the prayer, the demons are already uncomfortable. Nothing has damaged. And that reminds me of a couple of years back, 2012, there about or 2010, 2010. No, two, uh, yeah, 2010 or 2011, there about. When a sister came to the church and I said to her, I said, sister, What's happening to your house? I don't know what's happening, but I saw something. And this thing needs to leave you alone for your life to go forward. She has two boys. And that lady today is my good, is my sister. She's my blood from Limpopo. That's why most people that knows me know I come from Limpopo. Hallelujah. So, sometime the two, the two children died the same day. The two sons died the same day. <laughs> then the Lord wake them up. The two sons died, and the Lord resurrected them. Then after that, I asked her, I said, listen, if we don't stop these people that lives in your house, something will happen. I said, okay, do me a favor. Do me a favor. Go to your house. Let them place oil anoint the gate, and throw water on top of the roof. Immediately, the children in the house, the, the person in the house threw the water in the roof. There was a thunder. There's a thunder in the house. Ah! This, this whole ceiling scattered, and something went out. Something went out of the house. And that was when that sister began to see peace, and everything changed in their life. Why am I saying this? 
So this sister Selim remind me of that. And there are so many ones. There was another one that, I, which one can I remember? There are too many of them. The one I said to her, what are these people doing in the house? Just go do something. Pray in that house. Release oil in that house. Immediately, a woman was found naked in the yard. <laughs> in the midnight. Naked, stuck naked. They were flying. They fly, but they could not fly out. So people of God, what you have done tonight is a dangerous prayer. And the Lord is asking us to repeat it. If you know you never checked that prayer, please go back and watch it. Go back and pray the prayer. And when we raise the prayer point here, please take it serious. Pray it from your heart. Listen, how to bring prayer into, I mean, God, bring God into action is to forget your problem. People of God, you have to forget your problem. If you are feeling pain on your head, forget it. Concentrate on prayer. If you are having challenges with your husband, with your wife, forget it. You have challenges with your children, forget it. You have a court case, forget it. You have debt, forget it. You have land issue, forget it. You are jobless, forget it. You have pain in your legs, forget it. Don't think about it. Concentrate on the Father. Concentrate on the Father. Soon after that, he takes care of that problem. But when you begin to concentrate on your problem, the problem will never be over because you cannot pray. It ceases the prayer. And the Bible says, quench not the spirit. When you quench the spirit, you're on your own. This is what I would try to educate you, to use a shovel, a shovel of life, to dig out what they buried against you, to pull you out from the grave, to pull you out from the pit, to pull you out from the dust, to pull to, uh, to uproot what they planted against you. It's one of the hardest prayer in the ministry of deliverance. It's one of the hardest prayer anyone can do for you and you can do for yourself. Praise the Lord. Because these people are real and they are serious in what they are doing. They are very persistent and very consistent. Devil is not a fool. Lucifer is not a fool, eh? He knows the creation. He knows what happened. Remember, he was there. He was the choir master general. It was because of sin and what sin did he commit? Disobedience. That's it. And that's why he became the father of disobedience. Those who disobey their father. Their grandfather, their master is Satan. Praise the Lord. So when you come to pray, I, I join you this morning and this day, this hour, this moment, in the name of the living God. Please leave your problem alone. Remember, Satan will always try to distract you, just to distract you, to pull you out of the track. The moment you succeeded in pulling you out of the track, all your prayer is in vain. That's why I said the worst problem, the worst disaster happened on Sunday service, on a meeting of this nature. When you are praying, you are looking at somebody, you are looking at the roof, you are looking at, you instead of looking at the Father. When you are praying, you are thinking about your stomach, or oh, what am I going to eat after prayer? Mine shall not live by the bread alone, but by every word that can come from the Father. While you are thinking, while you are praying, you are thinking about your landlord. What is your landlord? You are the owner of the house. Why are you thinking about the landlord? While you are praying, you are thinking about the check that bounce your, your gift to someone. Hey, that check must not bounce. No, forget about the check. The check will surely clear if the Lord clears you. While you are praying, you are thinking about the pain in your stomach. What is the pain? We are talking to the greater physician, the doctor of all doctors. You are talking to him, you are communicating with him, you are having business with him, and you are thinking about pain. What is the pain? He's the great physician. Remember when Peter took the sword, took the, took the, 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 the sword and slayed the ear of the high priest? You know what he said to Peter? He said, listen, take the sword back to his place. Take the sword back. Don't you know I can ask my father 
and he sent me one legion of angels to finish those people. Don't you know? Then he said to him, who, he who dies by the sword, he who lives by the sword, dies by the sword. So take the sword back to his place. Then he picked the ear of the man, he lifted it up, and he put it on the ear and put it back. The ear went back. Praise the Lord. I recall one time, 2015, we were in the church praying. I was busy in the deliverance, busy in the deliverance, busy, 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 praying, praying, going, 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 praying, praying, praying. All of a sudden, they come and start distracting me. Hey, daddy, a child is dead. The child died. He's dead. He can't breathe. The hands, the, everything is gone. No more breath, no pulse in his hand. I said, does that trouble you? If the child died, is it your business? He said, ah, man of God. The child is dead. You are telling that the child is dead. I said, I look at them and say, what do you mean by the child is dead? If the child is dead, is that your problem? Okay, can still carry the dead child. Then I continue doing my father's work. When I turn, I say, where is the child? They do the child. I leave the child up. Bring the life into the child. I, say, I give the child. The child, ah! the child cough. <laughs> I say, okay, take the child. I tell the child, give to the mother. Go and feed your child. Your child, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with your child. It was a baby boy. Pastor people and everybody were looking. Hey, why must I be worried because a child died? No. <laughs> when Peter, when Lazarus died, does he trouble our Lord Jesus Christ? Does he stop him from doing the work? According to John 11. He said, no, I just want to tell you that he, he's sleeping. <laughs> I love Thomas so much. Thomas is a good man. <laughs> Thomas said, well, if he sleep, <laughs> let him sleep. After he sleep, he will wake up. I like that one. After he sleep, he, what? he will wake up. Then he continued. He said, okay, let us go that we may wake him. Praise the Lord. He said, say, let us go. Okay, let me tell you. Lazarus is dead. But glory be to the Father that I was not there. Let us go and see him. Let us go. And when they arrived there, four days he's been buried. Four days. The shovel of life. Four days. He's been buried. So, people of God, don't think about what the enemy has buried in your life. Because when we use the shovel of life, <laughs> you don't know. You will live again. Hallelujah. You will live again. Your business will live. Your marriage will live. Your career will live. Your finances will live. Your health will live. You will live. Because he lives. You will live. Say, because Christ lives, therefore I live. Touch yourself. Say, because Christ lives, therefore I, Isaka, live. Because my life is in the hand of Christ. It's not in the hand of death. No. Your life is not in the hand of death. That's why Lord Jesus Christ said, let's go. When he arrived there, Martha went and met him. The Mary of Martha and said, Hey, your friend is dead. If you were there, you would not have died. Then she went back to call the sister, Mary. She's calling you. I said, What? He's here. Then she ran. When she was running, the people said, oh, She's running to the grave to go and pray. I mean, to go and cry again. But she, instead of running to the grave, she ran to the master. May you run to the master in the name of Jesus Christ. May you always run to the master all the days of your life. Instead of running to problem or thinking about problem, you run to the master who has the key solution to your problem. Who has the key to your problem? Who has the solution to your problem? When he ran there, said, when she got there, she said, no, hey, your friend is dead. If you were here, you wouldn't have died. He said, show me where he was buried. And that is where, according to John eleven thirty five, 35, the Bible says, and Jesus wept. <laughs> because of the compassion, the compassion, the compassionate heart, that is to show how much he loved him. And the people say, oh, he's, he's crying. But others say, he who, who opened the people's eyes, who made the land to work, why, did, why, why is he crying? Why couldn't you lift him up? 
He says, he said, show me where he was buried. He said, no, four days already gone. You should be stinking by now. Are you stinking in life? Are people calling that you are smelling? Let me tell you, that smelling odor we turn to the best perfume in the world in the name of Jesus Christ. The men will be looking for just to be close to you, to hear your perfume, to hear that odor that comes from you. The odor of life, the perfume of life. He said, forget about how long he's been buried. Didn't I tell you that I'm the resurrection and I am life? I am the resurrection and I'm dead. I am the dead and resurrection. Don't I tell you that who, whoever believes in me will live? He said, yes, on the last day. He said, I'm the last day. I am the first. I am the last. Hallelujah. And that's where my song come from. Christ is the first in my life, beginning and the end. The first and the last, beginning and the end. So when you began to know that Christ is the first and the last in your life, that is when the gospel come alive in your life. So when he got to where he was buried, he said, remove the, the stone. Put it away. He called himself, Lazarus, come forth. The Bible said, he that was buried, tied all way. He said, lose him, lose him. Remove the infected the garment. And the garment was removed. Every fertile garment they have used to cover you. By the shovel of life that we have used, I lose you. And I say, go, for it is well with you. Well with your marriage, well with your career, well with your future, well with your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. It is well with you. Just to rejoice. So encouraging well. Forget about your trouble whenever we come to this platform. Whenever we come together, leave your problem alone so that the manager of all problems will manage your problems. Managing problem is not your business. Tell your neighbor, I mean, tell yourself, managing problem is not my business. It's the business of my father, my creator. He manages my problem and I walk free. That's why Hebrew, uh, Exodus 14, 14, the Lord will fight our battle and you hold your peace. He will fight for you, and he will give you victory, verse 15. He will give you victory over all challenges of life. People are going to see this shovel. Since we finish, I have been anointing it. I've been praying over it. I have been saying, Lord, from the beginning here to the end of it, I've been crying, Lord, let everything they have buried against my people, no matter where they buried it, under the sea, on the mountain, in the valley, on top of a tree, wherever they buried what belongs to you. Is it your children? Is it your wife? Is it your husband? Is it a wedding ring? Is it a promotion? Have enemies camp at the roof of your house? Where are they? With this shovel? <laughs> They're in trouble. They're in trouble. Remember the testimony of Anna last night? She said, when they buried something in front of her house, she called the men of God and said, oh, men of God, they buried something. And while she was buried, they said she, she said they buried something, she went and bought a shovel. And the men of God said, no, don't shovel it. What is there is different. Don't, do, don't use the shovel. Let the father fight the battle. In the night, the father used her and went and digged something out. May the Father use you to dig every rubbish they buried against you in the name of Jesus Christ. So people of God, when a prayer comes, when we raise such prayer, you know it's a dangerous prayer. It's a dangerous prayer. There are things that I saw, I shake my head and say, yeah, my Father, my Lord, people are wicked. The world is wicked. The world is wicked. The word is wicked. I called one brother today when I asked him to bring something. So he was asking me about another brother, brother Mike. I, I said, brother Mike, which brother Mike? He said that one that was giving testimony about how he got married five years, then he come to cry to you. And you ask him to go and make food and the wife will have a baby boy. 
I said, ah. So you remember the brother? He said, yes. How is he doing? I said, no, it's fine. Praise the Lord. He said, after many years, he was crying. How can he be here? Others are getting children like, in fact, people who doesn't live, when you lift your hand, the others say, no, I don't want child again. He said, you must have it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So people of God, whatever they have done against you. You see this? This is dangerous. In the kingdom of darkness. Because this is what they used to turn life upside down. You know, when you dig, when they dig it, they lift it up. Hallelujah. You see me? They lift it up and they turn it upside down. They turn it upside down. Hmm? So whatever they have turned upside down in your life, my father is here to restore you. The carpenters of heaven are here to restore you. Can I get a winning amen to that? But you have your part to play. Do not, during this prayer, allow anything. I repeat, do not, during this prayer, allow anything to distract you. Don't give in to them. Don't give in. Because their duty is to make sure that particular hour or minute or second of prayer, they distract you. And any slight distraction is equal to destruction. And that is why you have to be very serious. These are the strategies. They are very persistent, very consistent. But you have to be very resistant. That's why the Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee away from you. Resist the devil and he will flee away from you. So their plan is to distract you. They are distractors. Remember what they don't know, they call them. What they know, they destroy. So it is well with you. In the name and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Get their communion ready. Let us partake of it. So tonight we are coming back. We come back and the Lord will instruct us on the way we should pray. We have to take it serious. I have given my time to you. You have to give your time to yourself. And tonight as we partake of the, the, the communion, remember today is the 15th day. We need to pray. On seconds get, minutes get, hours get, monthly get, and yearly get again. Praise the Lord. We need to pray on the gates. Because gates are very important. That's why I always instruct to carry the battle of your life to the gate of your enemies, and they will leave you alone. Carry the battle to their gate. Because what they don't do, what they do mostly is this. They don't enter the kingdom. And you that is already in the kingdom, they don't want you to stay. Praise the Lord. So it is well with you. Begin to cover yourself with the blood of Jesus Christ.